Hello there, my name is Beth Gath and I'm the Media Literacy Coordinator here at the Peabody Public Library. And first off, I want to let you know that this class is geared to go at your pace, just like all of the other stream classes, which means that you can minimize this, pause this, go away from this, and come back to this whenever you would like. Uh, one thing about this class I want to let you know right off the bat was that I was able to find a bunch of tutorial videos. So this class is, has a bunch of different kinds of videos to show you hands-on how to do a lot of the things that involve your Kindle. So definitely um, excited about having those videos for you. And those are also available to you at Amazon.com backslash support. So you'd be able to go in there and look at those at any time that you would like. Or you can get with me and I can help you um, be able to get yourself attached to that. So also want to let you know about the Computer Class Pass Incentive Program. Um, if you're a part of that, you're going to want to be listening for your secret code inside of this class. Get that to me by either emailing me, calling me, coming in to see me, and I'll get you marked down for taking the class. This way you're on your way to some great prizes. If you're not familiar with the Computer Class Pass, please get in contact with me. My number is listed right here for you as well as my email address, and I will get you um, all connected to that. You definitely don't want to miss out on some great prizes, especially if you're watching all of the stream videos. So without further ado, I want to welcome you to Understanding Your Kindle, and we're going to be exploring the Kindle Fire and the Kindle Fire HD. I went ahead and provided you with a tablet comparison chart just so you can see where uh, most of these sit and what are some of your more popular, uh, who manufactures them, and how much they might cost you. This goes from anywhere from the Kindle Fire all the way through the iPad 2. Um, and it just kind of tells you how much, uh, when it became available, if it has Wi-Fi, if it's a 3G network, what kind of operating system it works on, how thick the device is, how much does the device weigh, how much the display size is, which would be like your screen, uh, the resolution, how it projects through the screen, your processor, your RAM memory, the storage that comes with it, um, and then of course if it has expandable storage so you're able to add more to it, whether it has a front camera, a back camera, Bluetooth, um, if it's HDMI compatible, USB compatible, if it has a GPS, or a and the battery life for that. So I wanted you to be aware of the different kinds of tablets that are available to you out there. And again, these are just a few of the many um, that are that are out there. Just for Android alone, I have a 66-page list front and back for just Android tablets alone. Um, but if you get the grasp of one, you'll understand the rest kind of thing. Which the Kindle Fire is basically an Android. However, it has that Kindle Fire or the Kindle software in there, um, which makes it a Kindle and not considered an Android. So I wanted you to have the opportunity to take a look at the different kinds of tablets, tablets and the way that they compare. Since this class is all about Kindle, I wanted to also provide you with a Kindle comparison chart uh, just to kind of let you know the differences between the different kinds of Kindles. Primarily, we're going to be working with the Kindle Fire um, HD7 today. However, um, you're going to notice that there's really not much of a difference with the HD 8.9, um, minus the fact of the screen and, and that it's LTE compatible now. So um, here is a, just a little Kindle comparison so you can get an idea of the operating system, the network, the screen size, the processor, the RAM, the storage, how fast it goes. Uh, whether it has a micro SD card slot, rear camera, front camera, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, GPS, um, your sensors, your TV out, your size, weight, battery price, and the application development, who actually created it and what softwares come with it. So I just wanted you to be aware of the different kinds of Kindles and how they differ. So the big question of class today is, what is the Kindle Fire? And the Kindle Fire is an Amazon centerpiece consumer hardware. It's a quality tablet that can be used to read emails, browse the web, and of course read books using the Kindle software. At just a 7.5 by 4.7 inches, the Kindle Fire is of a smaller size to the standard Kindle devices, but has high specifications that make it ideal for a range of tasks and activities beyond reading. 
With 8 gig of storage, your Kindle Fire can store music, podcasts, video clips, and other data. It also has an impressive 512 megabytes of RAM, which enables the tablet to run perfectly with the dual core of a 1 gigahertz processor. Um, it also has a uh, 1025 by 600 multi-touch Gorilla Glass display um, with a 169 pixels per inch and choice of 16 million colors with graphics provided by a power VR chip. Uh, the Kindle Fire offers a 3.5 millimeter headphone socket and a micro USB 2.0 connector along with the wireless connectivity. Um, note that there is no mobile internet variant of this tablet. Um, what is probably most interesting about the tablet and what sets it apart from other Kindles is the presence of the Android 2.3 gingerbread operating system customized to feel less like an Android and fit more with the visual style of the other Kindle devices, Kindle devices that are out there. So now what we're doing with Kindle is we're actually combining Android and Kindle. And this combination of approaches makes this device most intriguing. To all intents and purposes, the Kindle Fire is an Android tablet with a special layer of software added to resemble a Kindle reader. This software provides access to an existing Kindle account through Amazon, as well as enabling the user to create a new account if necessary. The use of the Android operating system also enables the use of various apps and games that can be downloaded from the Amazon, Amazon App Store. While the device's ability to playback video and audio media makes it an ideal um, for downloading content from Amazon Prime. The dual purpose makes the tablet a great choice of an e-reader. Um, you might be completely happy taking advantage of the ability to simply read and enjoy your Kindle books, magazines, and comics um, on your Kindle Fire. Or you might be excited by its internet access, provision of emails, and apps and games. Of course, this is nothing new. A Kindle application is available on all Android phones and tablets and does essentially the same thing. But with the Kindle Fire, you get the focus on the library rather than the apps. And this makes a considerable difference. And of course, uh, the relatively low price point of the Kindle Fire helps as well. So here we have what looks like the Kindle Fire. And it shows you um, where everything is located. You've got your mic and your headphone input at the top, as well as your front camera. You've got a USB port. This is going to be so you can plug it in and transfer that information onto your computer or vice versa. You also have your power button. Um, and then, of course, you see their hand and they're sliding across. That's your slide bar, and you're going to learn more about that in the class. Of course, you've got a rear camera and then your speakers. So there you go. This is the Kindle Fire and um, how it works and all of the components that are involved in it. Why don't you right now and minimize this and just kind of take a look at your Kindle and see if you have um, some differences and you may if you're using an earlier version of Kindle versus the Kindle Fire HD 8.9 or the Kindle Fire HD 7. You may notice some differences but all in all they all pretty much work the same. So uh, go ahead right now and just kind of compare what you have to uh, what we've talked about already. Charging and battery life. Your Fire tablet may not be fully charged when you first receive it. Charge the battery before you register and set up your device. To charge your device, connect the included micro USB cable to your tablet and to the power adapter, and then plug the power adapter into a power outlet. The micro USB port may feel slightly loose when connected. This is normal. Charge your device with the USB cable and power adapter that came with your Fire tablet. Using another power adapter or USB cable or charging from the USB port on your computer may increase charging time. The battery icon at the top of the screen will display a lightning bolt to indicate that your device is charging properly. To see the amount of battery remaining on your Fire tablet, swipe down from the top of the screen to show Quick Actions, tap Settings, and then tap Device Options. The battery percentage provides an estimate of how much charge your Fire tablet has left. Your Fire tablet is optimized to deliver high performance with low battery consumption. Battery life will vary based on device settings and usage. 
You can conserve battery life by turning off features and adjusting settings on your Fire tablet. From Settings, tap Power Management. Turn on Smart Suspend to increase battery life by automatically turning off wireless connectivity when you aren't using your device. Or manually schedule Smart Suspend activities. In the Display Settings, adjust your screen brightness and sleep settings, turn on Auto Brightness if available, or move the slider to a lower setting. You can also lower your volume. If your tablet is not charging, try restarting your device by holding down the power button and selecting Power Off. Press the power button again to restart. If you are still experiencing problems, try plugging your power adapter into a different power outlet to ensure the outlet is working properly. For more help information, visit our help pages at amazon.com forward slash device support. Connect to Wi-Fi. Connect to a Wi-Fi network to buy, stream, or download content from the cloud and sync to receive items. You can verify if you are connected by viewing the wireless indicator in the upper right corner of your tablet. Your Fire tablet automatically detects nearby Wi-Fi networks and wireless hotspots. Some networks are open for everyone to join, while others require a password to connect. Swipe down from the top of the screen to access Quick Actions, tap Wireless, and then tap Wi-Fi. Next to Wi-Fi, tap On. Tap the name of the network you'd like to connect to and enter the network password using the on-screen keyboard. Password protected networks are shown with a lock icon. Please note that this is not your Amazon password. Amazon does not know your Wi-Fi network password. After you connect to a Wi-Fi network, your tablet automatically connects to the network again when it's in range. If more than one network is in range, your device automatically connects to the last network used. Airplane mode lets you turn off all of your wireless connections. When airplane mode is on, an airplane icon will appear at the top of the screen next to the battery indicator. If you are having problems connecting and have verified that airplane mode is off, try restarting your router and modem. Turning your router and modem off and back on again solves many Wi-Fi connection issues. Switch off the modem and router and unplug the power cables from both. Wait 30 seconds. Plug the power cable into the modem and wait for it to boot up. Plug the power cable into the router and wait for it to boot up. Your Fire tablet will automatically reconnect when the signal returns. For more help information, visit our help pages at amazon.com forward slash device support. So once you receive your Kindle and you've already watched a couple of videos already, already telling you how to connect it to the Wi-Fi and charging your Kindle, um, now you're going, we're going to talk about registering your Kindle. And to buy content and deliver it to your device, you'll need to connect to a wireless network and register your Fire tablet to an Amazon account. Registering also allows you to transfer purchases between devices and Kindle reading apps. Um, and you learned more about connecting wirelessly to a network in the prior video that we saw. But from your home screen, you would just swipe down from the top of the screen and then tap on Settings. Um, and then tap My Account and tap Register. If you already have an Amazon account, you would just enter the email address and password associated with your account and then tap Register. If you do not have an Amazon account, tap Create Account and then follow the instructions to set up a new account. And I actually have two pictures here showing you. If you already have an Amazon account, you can go ahead and enter that information in there. If not a little lower, it says New to Amazon, Create an Account. Then you could push on Create an Account and um, from there you can create it. You can also deregister your Fire Tablet. Um, by deregistering your Fire Tablet, um, you can do it in a different account. If you no longer want to use it to purchase digital content, you can deregister your Fire Tablet from your device or from your computer. To deregister your Fire Tablet, you must be connected to a wireless network.
So this is important. After you deregister your device from Amazon account, you won't be able to access items stored in the cloud or items previously downloaded through other devices and Kindle reading applications. So keep that in mind. So from your device, you would just swipe down from the top of the screen and tap settings, tap my account, and then tap deregister. Um, if you do it from your computer, you would want to visit, visit manage your content and devices, and then select your devices, select your device or app, and select deregister in the actions column. To confirm, select deregister again on the pop-up window. Um, after deregistering, you can register your Fire Tablet to another Amazon account. If you're selling your device to a third party, consider a factory reset, which will remove any content downloaded to the device. So you don't want somebody else having your information, especially if you've paid for those, you don't want to lose them. So make sure if, if you're getting rid of the tablet, you deregister. But this is all about registering your tablet and how you can get yourself connected to that store so you can start getting those books and reading along with Kindle. So why don't you right now go ahead, if you haven't registered your Kindle, go ahead and do that now. If you're having problems with that, just get in contact with me and we can sit down and do a free one-on-one -on -one appointment with you and get you all set up on there or even creating an Amazon account. So um, that's the only way you're going to be able to get some of these items is if you actually have an Amazon account. So it's very important that you get yourself registered on your Kindle and get set up. Settings. Your Fire Tablet is designed to make most configuration settings automatically, but you can use the Settings menu to further manage your apps, internet connection, and more. Swipe down from the top of the screen to open Quick Actions and then tap Settings. The Settings menu includes My Account to register your tablet, manage accounts, and connect to social networks, Help to access help and customer service information. Household profiles to enable each member of your household to have a personalized fire experience. Wireless and VPN, which you can use to manage your connection settings. Device options to install system updates, change your fire's name, find your tablet if it is lost, back up and restore your tablet, change the date and time, Get info about your phone and reset your tablet to factory defaults. Use power management to preserve your tablet's battery life. Applications to configure application settings. Display and sounds to set your tablet's volume and brightness levels, initiate display mirroring, adjust your device sleep time and change the device font size. Language and keyboard to set the language and keyboard settings. Accessibility to manage vision and hearing settings. Parental controls to manage child profiles and restrict purchasing, content, and web browsing on your tablet. Security and privacy to set a lock screen password, manage notifications, and adjust other security settings. And finally, legal and compliance to access terms, privacy information, and legal notices for your device. For more help information, visit our help pages at amazon.com forward slash device support. Email, calendar, and contacts. Use the email app to access and manage your email on your Fire tablet. More than one email account can be added, offering combined or single inbox views. After you set up an account, email will automatically be delivered to your fire. With Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail, including Live, MSN, and Outlook.com, and corporate exchange accounts, your contacts and calendar will also be synced. When you first enter the email app, you will be prompted to add an account. Enter your email address and then tap Next and follow the on-screen instructions. If your email address is one which we recognize, you're finished. If your email account isn't recognized, you will be taken to the Advanced Setup screen where you can manually add your email service information. If you're unable to set up your email account or are unsure what settings your account should be using, contact your email service provider or system administrator for more information. To customize your email experience, swipe from the left to open the left panel and then tap Settings. 
and then tap Email Settings or select an account. In Email Settings, you can change a number of features, including message text size, whether or not to show embedded images, and other customization settings. In Account Settings, you can change your account name, set a default email account, manage your sync and data settings, customize your signature, and delete an account from your device. The Calendar app manages your meetings, events, and schedule. You can sync some email accounts' associated calendars, including Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail, and Exchange and Facebook calendars to your Fire tablet. If you have multiple calendars synced to your Fire, you can select the ones you'd like to display. To select calendars to display, access the left panel and then tap the checkbox next to the calendars you want to view. Open the Contacts app to manage your address book and contacts. From a contact, you can tap an email address in order to email that contact. Tap Edit to change contact details. and more to create a new contact, delete a contact, share a contact, join to link contacts with multiple entries, print contact information, or import and export your contacts. Tap the star to add the contact to your VIPs for quick access from the right panel of the contact, email, and calendar apps. For more help information, visit our help pages at amazon.com forward slash device support. Navigating your fire. Your home screen shows your carousel, which displays your recently viewed books, games, videos, music apps, and other digital content. Swipe your finger left or right across the screen to move through the carousel. Your most recently accessed items appear first. To remove an item or multiple items from the carousel, press and hold the item and then tap Remove. To switch from the carousel to the home screen view, simply swipe up from the bottom of the screen. You can press and drag apps to move them around the screen and reorganize your home screen. To add your apps and content to the home screen, press and hold the item and then tap Add to Home. To remove an item, press and hold the item and then tap Remove. The top of the home screen displays the navigation bar, which you will use to search for content and to access content libraries. From within a content library, swipe from the left edge to view additional menu and navigation selections. The selections you see vary depending on the type of content you are currently viewing. Tap anywhere outside of the navigation panel to close the panel and return to your content library. Tap Store to purchase and sample new content from the Amazon Store. From most screens, with the exception of the home screen, you can access the Options bar. The Options bar contains the Back button, which will return you to your previous screen, the Home Screen button, which will return you to the home screen, and the Search button, which you can use to search for content on the device, in the Amazon Store, or on the web. If you are reading or performing another function and do not see the Options bar, tap the center of the screen or use the Handle icon, if available, to bring it into view. You can seamlessly switch between recently viewed apps, books, videos, and more on your Fire by dragging your finger from the Options bar and then tap the item you wish to open. Swipe to remove an item and instantly close it. For more help information, visit our help pages at amazon.com forward slash device support. Quick Actions and Notifications From any Fire Tablet screen, swipe down from the top of the screen to show Quick Actions and Notifications. From Quick Actions, you can lock or unlock screen rotation, use brightness to adjust the brightness of your screen, and select Wireless to manage your wireless connection. 
You can also turn on quiet time to silence device notifications, get help, and access the settings menu, which contains numerous features and settings for your device, such as my account, profiles, parental controls, accessibility features, and more. Any recent notifications, such as new email messages or app updates, will be displayed below quick actions in the notifications tray. Tap a notification to go to the related app or setting, or swipe the notification to the right or to the left to dismiss it. To dismiss all notifications, tap Clear All. You can modify and manage notification settings by tapping Settings and then Notifications and Quiet Time. Tap Quiet Time to adjust Quiet Time control settings or use Notification Sound to select the sound of new notifications. Select an app from the list to customize whether notifications from that app appear in the notifications tray, display a banner at the top of the screen, or play a sound. To enable access to notifications while your tablet is locked, swipe down from the top of the screen to show quick actions, Tap Settings, tap Security and Privacy, and then tap On to turn on notifications on the lock screen. For more help information, visit our help pages at amazon.com forward slash device support. Syncing and the Cloud Anytime you purchase Amazon content, such as books and other digital items, Amazon creates a permanent copy in your Amazon Cloud, your own online, secure, personal storage space. First, make sure your device is connected wirelessly. You can verify if you are connected by viewing the wireless indicator in the upper right corner of your fire or swiping down from the top of the screen to access quick actions and tapping Wireless, and then Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi icons will show bars indicating the strength of the connection. If you are in an area with a poor Wi-Fi signal, try selecting a different Wi-Fi network if available. After confirming that you are connected wirelessly, tap a content library such as books in the top navigation bar of your Fire tablet. Content already downloaded to your device will appear with a checkmark icon. Content without a checkmark is being stored in the cloud. Tap the content you want to download to your Fire. Downloaded content will now appear on your home screen. Use the toggle button to switch between the cloud to see your full library and device to see only the content you've downloaded to your device. After you connect wirelessly, you can sync your device to receive content delivered through Manage Your Content and Devices, synchronize content progress across devices or apps, and download any updates. Visit Amazon.com forward slash MYCD to deliver purchased content to your device. WhisperSync technology is enabled by default on your Fire. WhisperSync automatically synchronizes compatible books, movies, games, and other content that is registered to the same Amazon account across devices and Kindle apps so you can pick up right where you left off. If WhisperSync is not enabled, you need to sync manually. Swipe down from the top of the screen to show the Quick Actions menu, tap Settings, and then tap Sync and Check for New Items. Content that was delivered to your device and saved bookmarks and notes should start downloading to your device. To sync to the furthest page read in a book while reading, swipe from the left edge to open the navigation panel, and then tap Sync to Furthest Page Read. For more help information, visit our help pages at amazon.com forward slash device support. I wanted to so show you the social media landscape, and that's what this is a picture of. Um, and this goes along the lines with all of the kind of tablets that you can use. But social media is huge, and it's broke down into different kinds of sections, like your, your publisher, which would be 
um, like your Wicca, your Dig, and things like that. And then you've got your share programs that allow you to upload, download from them, and that would be YouTube, Flickr, slideshows, and things along that. Uh, you've got your discussion forums, and that's going to be like your FaceTime, your Skype, um, your instant messaging, and things along those lines. Then you've got your social networks, which is going to be your MySpace, your Facebook, your linked account that you may have, um, or anything like that. You've got your microblogging, which is kind of like your Twitter, um, and anything that feeds off of each other, your TweetPeak, um, and places like that. Um, then you've got Livestream, which is like your friend feed or your social thing. Um, then you've got Live Chat, which is like Yahoo Live, your Livecaster, um, any of those sites you go on that have the live chat that you can talk to your companies over the internet. That's where, that's where you would find it in that social media. You've got your virtual worlds. Um, they've got Barbie, and there's different kinds of clubs and things along those lines. So there are virtual worlds. And of course, you've got social games, and Yahoo has a lot of social games. Uh, Pogo has a lot of social games. This is where you're going in and you're actually playing with people that you can't physically see, but they're actually people and not a computer person, and they're playing the games with you. And, of course, you've got your MMO, which is going to be more of those games um, and how you play them by yourself instead of the social aspect of it. It would be more of an individual level. But I wanted you to understand the social media landscape that's involved with the Kindle as well as Android, iPad, any of the other kinds of tablets that you have, they all kind of fall along the line with the social media landscape. So I wanted you to kind of see how everything is arranged when it comes to social media. So there's a reason why I had you look at the social media landscape before we got into the next part of linking your Fire tablet to a social network. Whether you are wanting to connect yourself to Twitter or you're wanting to connect yourself to Facebook, you definitely want to learn how to get yourself connected to the social media aspect of it. Obviously, you would need to have an account with Twitter or you would need to have an account with um Facebook in order to get yourself linked, um, but you can link your Fire tablet to a social ne network to share your reading status, notes, book highlights, and book readings, or, in, or import your calendars, contacts, and photos from your account to your device. So what you would do is you would just swipe down from the top of the screen and then tap on settings, which you've already seen a video on the settings, and then you would tap my account, tap social networks, and then tap either connect to your Facebook account, connect to your Twitter account, or your Goodreads. Uh, by connecting to your Facebook account, you connect to Facebook to import your calendars, contacts, and photos to share your reading experience with your Facebook friends. Connecting to your Twitter account is easily um, share your reading experience with your followers. And then if you link to Goodreads, you can get quick access to your Goodreads shelves, uh, find new books to read, and see what your friends are reading. Um, and you can learn more about that if you go to Goodreads on the Fire tablet online. Um, and then there, you enter the account information for your social network and then tap Done. And you can unlink your social network account at any time. So if you don't want to keep it going, you don't have to. But it's very important to learn how to get yourself connected to the social media world um, and social networks. So if you have any problems connecting your, your Kindle to a social network that you have an account with, then please get in contact with me and I can assist you with that. Uh, maybe you're wanting to get yourself connected to Facebook and you haven't done it yet. You can also call me for that and we can sit down and create you a Facebook or Twitter and then connect you to Kindle as um, with the new setup of that. So go ahead right now if you haven't and get yourself connected to your social network or go in and just kind of look around in your settings and see how it all works. I just want to talk to you a little bit about language and keyboard. You um, can set the default device language for your Fire tablet and change how the on-screen keyboard for your device operates with features like autocorrection, next word prediction, and different keyword languages. So to change your device language, you would swipe down from the top of the screen and then tap settings like you've done in prior things. Tap language and keyboard and then tap language. Uh, select your language from the list that appears. 
tip. Uh, some languages offer additional regional settings. For example, if you choose French, you can select either French France or French Canada. In addition to device language, regional settings also change the device keyboard numbers, dates, and more. Uh, to change your keyboard language, you swipe down from the top of the screen and tap settings, tap language and keyboard, and then tap keyboard language. And that's what this is all about um, for that. Um, then you would select your preferred language from the list that appears, or to download a new language, you would tap download language, and then tap the language you want to download. To remove a keyboard language from your active keyboard language list, tap the checkbox next to the language. Note, if you're downloading a keyboard language for the first time, you will need to accept the terms of service before you can download the keyboard. Here's a tip for you. When you're using the on-screen keyboard to type, press and hold the space bar on the keyboard to switch between languages. So that's not too hard to figure out. Um, and then, of course, you've got your keyboard settings. To configure autocorrect spell checking and other features, you would swipe down from the top of the screen and tap settings like you've been doing. Uh, tap language and keyboard and then tap keyboard settings. Tap the switch next to the following feature to turn them on or off. Uh, sound on key press. The key, um, what this means is the keyboard will play a tone as you type. Autocorrection, which uh, word spells incorrectly, will be corrected automatically as you type. Auto capitalization, these are words at the beginning of sentences that will be capitalized automatically. Advanced keyboard is secondary keys, will be accessible by pressing and holding. The next word prediction, uh, the keyboard will predict the next word you are likely to type based on the previous entered word or text. Uh, check spelling, this is a, a word spelled incorrectly and it will be underlined. Trace typing enter words, enters words by tracing your finger from key to key. Tap personal direct dictionary to add words to your personal dictionary to enhance autocorrect suggestions. So keep in mind that you can tap the switch next to all of those features to turn them on or off. So um, if you don't want some of those, you can actually turn them off. And here's some keyboard tips for you. To access, access special characters, tap the question mark one, two, three key, and then tap uh, the little squiggly line backslash and the greater than sign key. Uh, tap the ABC key to return to the alphabetical keyboard. So there you go. And you see that one, two, three at the bottom in the second picture there. Um, that's what I was talking about. Um, if you have a next word prediction turned on, the keyboard will provide suggestions of the next word you will type. Tap a word in the list to select it. Uh, to enable caps lock, double tap, or press the hold shift key. Um, single tap the shift key to exit um, related help topics. So this is everything that involves changing the language and kind of setting up your keyboard for you a little bit. So if you haven't had a chance to take a look at the language part and the keyboard part and even the combination of it, then go ahead right now and minimize this video and kind of get yourself um, used to getting into settings and playing around with the different kinds of settings on your Kindle. And please don't get discouraged. You're not going to hurt anything. Pushing buttons is the only way you're going to learn how to use the tablet. And the more you press, the, the more options you have to learn. Now I want to talk to you about your clock and weather when it comes to your Kindle. Um, after you connect to a wireless network and register your Fire tablet, your Fire tablet automatically chooses the time zone, which sets the date and time on, on your device. The current time is shown on the status bar at the top of the screen, and you can see that in uh, that very first picture there to the left. Note, selecting the time zone is how you set the date and time on your Fire tablet device. There is no option to set the date and time manually. So to change the time zone, you would swipe down from the top of the screen and tap that settings like you've been shown before. Uh, tap device options and then tap date and time. If automatic time zone is turned on, uh, your device will use a Wi-Fi or mobile network if available for the device. Uh, to determine the time zone, if you want to select your time zone manually, tap off next to the automatic time zone and then tap select time zone. Select your time zone from the list that appears. The clock will update to the time and date for that zone. Uh, when you're using the clock app, with the clock app, clock app, you can set an alarm, view the time across multiple time zones, and access additional clock features like your stopwatch or your timer.
So to open the clock app, you would go from your home uh, and then tap apps and then tap clock. If you want to add or remove a clock, you would swipe from the left, the ledge edge of the screen and tap all cities, tap the plus, and then select a city from the list or type the name of the city you want to add. To remove a clock, press and hold the city and then tap remove. Uh, to set an alarm, you would swipe from the left edge of the screen and then tap alarms. Tap the plus to add a new alarm. Select the time schedule and alarm sound and then tap set alarm. If you want to set a timer, again, you are swiping from that left edge of the screen and then you would tap timer. Um, set the timer and then tap start. When the timer is finished, it will beep until you double tap the screen. While the timer is going, you can add additional time by adding, by tapping add one minute, pause the timer, or cancel the current timer. To use the stopwatch, you would swipe from the left edge of the screen, tap stopwatch, and then tap start. To start a new tap, to new lap, tap lap. Uh, to reset the stopwatch, tap stop, and then tap reset. Using the nightstand, nightstand mode will display the current time against a black background and is idea to use when you're sleeping. To use nightstand mode, swipe from the left edge of the screen and then tap nightstand. Tap the screen uh, to exit nightstand mode as well. So that's all about your clocks and how you can get to them and how you can manage them. Now we're going to talk about your weather. Uh, you can use the weather app on the Fire Tablet to get the current temperature, hourly forecast for the next 12 hours, and 10-day forecast for your current location in other cities around the world. Uh, the weather app requires a network connection. So to do this, um, to add a location, you would tap the icon um, in the upper left-hand corner, then enter the city or the zip code, and then the select the desired location. Uh, to view the hourly forecast from for the next 12 hours, um, in portrait mode, the forecast for the next 9 hours is displayed at the bottom of the screen. If you turn your device to landscape mode or tap to expand the section, um, and you can view the next 12 hours. To view the 10-day forecast at the bottom of the screen, tap daily, then tap to expand the section and view the forecast for the next 10 days. View your saved locations. You can swipe uh, left or right or swipe from the left edge of the screen and select a city from the list. Uh, to remove a location, you would swipe from the left edge of the screen, press and hold the city, and then tap remove. Uh, manage settings such as displaying temperature in Fahrenheit or Celsius. Swipe from the left edge of the screen and then tap settings. Modify your desired settings and then tap the down arrow to go back to the weather app. So this is everything that involves your clock and your weather. So if you haven't had a, have not had a chance to get in there to get yourself familiar with the uh, clock and the weather and things along those lines, do so right now. Get yourself all set up or at least get to know it a little bit. If you're a part of the Computer Class Pass Incentive Program, your secret code is My Kindle's on Fire. Give me that code and I will get you marked down for the class and you'll be on your way with prizes. Using the Silk Web Browser. Once you've connected your Fire tablet wirelessly, open the Silk Browser by tapping the Silk Browser icon from your home screen. The Silk Browser will open to the most visited page. From here, you can access your most visited web pages immediately or use the address bar to find a website. In the address bar, type the web address or URL of the site you want to visit. Silk will suggest sites based on your default search engine. Tap a website to go to it or tap Go on the keyboard when you finish typing the web address. Swipe from the left edge of the page or tap the navigation panel icon to access your most visited sites again, your bookmarks, downloads, and history. History will show you a list of websites visited on your device. Tap Clear All to delete your history. The Trending Now menu shows you a list of websites currently popular with other Amazon Silk browser users. The Settings menu contains additional controls for customizing your Silk browser, including setting the default search engine, additional data and privacy options, and the Reset All Settings to Default function. The other basic navigation features of the Silk browser are the plus icon, which you can use to open a new browser tab. You can create up to 10 tabs. 
To close a tab, tap the X in the tab or press and hold the tab to close it or close multiple tabs at once. The search icon, which you can use to search the web using your preferred search engine or to type in a web address or URL of a site you want to visit. The forward and back buttons, which will take you to the next or previous page. And the menu, which contains additional features and settings, such as Print Page, Share Page, which allows you to share the page you are visiting with friends and family using apps installed on your device, such as email, Facebook, and Twitter. Add or edit a bookmark. Find in Page, which enables you to find a word or phrase on the page you're visiting. Request another view, to request the desktop or mobile view of the website you're visiting and Full Screen, which will hide the Options bar and Address bar and allow the page you're visiting to fill up the entire screen. Swipe down from the top of the screen to exit Full Screen. If enabled by the website you are visiting, you can press and hold a file, image, or video in the browser window and then tap Save. Any items downloaded from Silk will appear in Downloads. For many websites, you can pinch inward or outward to increase and decrease the size of the page. For more help information, visit our help pages at amazon.com forward slash device support. Now it's time for some fun. Uh, we're going to talk about the Amazon App Store on your Fire tablet. And in this section, we're going to be talking about buying and downloading games and managing your Game Circle profile. So shop for and instantly download games and mobile apps with the Amazon App Store on your Fire tablet. Um, you can search for and purchase games and mobile, uh, mobile apps in the Amazon App Store on your Fire tablet. To successfully purchase games and apps from your Amazon App Store, you'll need to set up your one-click payment method. Your one-click payment method must be a credit or debit card issued by a bank with a valid billing address. U.S. customers are not required to have a credit or debit card or, or Amazon.com gift card when purchasing free apps or games. Note, some games and apps offer in-app purchasing, so make sure that um, you learn how to turn off the in-app purchasing, so you'd want to go up to set up parental controls to do that. So now we're going to talk about how you can get into the store. So from the home screen, you're going to tap apps or games and then tap store. Locate the app or game you want to buy. In the search field, type the search term, um, type your search terms, and then tap the magnifying glass. So you see there on that left, in that left picture, it says search for apps at the top. You would just type in whatever you're looking for. For instance, if you're looking for Angry Birds, then you would type in Angry Birds, and then click on that little hourglass or that magnifying glass that's right there. Uh, to narrow your search, swipe from the left edge of the screen and then tap Browse Categories. Recommended for you, bestsellers, or new releases. So there's another way that you can do that. Uh, tap the button displaying the price. If it's a paid app or game, or tap Free if it is a free app or game, and then tap Get App. If you're purchasing a paid app or game, you can complete your purchase using Amazon Coins or your one-click payment method. After you buy an app or game, it automatically downloads and installs to your Kindle Fire. Um, tap Open to view your app or game. If a license agreement appears, carefully read the agreement and then tap Agree to accept the terms and conditions. Um, here's a tip for you. You can give Amazon Coins as a gift or redeem gifted Amazon Coins from your Fire tablet. To give coins as a gift from the App Store, swipe from the left edge of the screen and tap Give Coins. Follow the on-screen instructions to choose the number of coins you would like to give as a gift. So um, that's all part of that. Um, recipient, you want to definitely get their information and added a gift message to that. Uh, to redeem coins you received, as a gift, open the email you received and tap the link to open the App Store and then tap Claim Now. Um, after you purchase an app or game, it will automatically update when the developer releases a new software version for the app. If the app or game requires new permissions, you will be asked to visit the Amazon App Store on your Fire tablet to manually update the app or game. To manually update an app, swipe from the left edge of the screen to the Am in the Amazon App Store and then tap App Updates. Tap Update next to the app you want to update or tap Update All to download the latest version for all apps in your account. 
Here's another tip. You can think your game progress for supported games across the Amazon device by enabling the Whisper Sync for games. Whisper Sync for Games saves you game data in the Amazon Cloud so you can pick up where you left off on another device. To enable the Whisper Sync for Games on your Fire tablet, tap Games, then swipe from the left edge of the screen, tap Settings, and then tap On next to Whis Whisper Sync for Games. So that's all about buying, downloading games and apps. Now we're going to talk about managing your game circle profile. You can view and compare achievements, leaderboards, and time played in game directly from your Fire tablet with Amazon Game Circle. In addition to achievements for individual games, you can also earn cross-game experience points, or XP. Uh, you can gain levels and badges as you play Game Circle enabled games. For games with Whisper Sync enabled, Game Circle syncs your game statistics so you can resume your progress on another Game Circle enabled device. So when you first start using Game Circle, um, we automatically create a public profile for you. So when you first get started, it, the Kindle is going to create a profile for you, which will include a nickname and a profile image. Your profile badges and high scores will appear in pub public leaderboards. You can customize your nickname and profile image or hide them from the public uh, from by tapping games and then swiping in from the left edge and then tap settings. So to find your games, you from the home, you would tap games in the navigation bar at the top of the screen. Tap cloud slash device to toggle between games stored in the cloud and games that are downloaded to your device. Um, if you want to choose a new profile picture, you would tap your game circle profile in the top left of the games library or swipe from the left edge of the screen and then tap profile. Tap your profile picture to choose a new one. Um, if you want to change your profile name, you would tap your Game Circle profile in the top left of the Games Library or swipe from the left edge of the screen and then tap Profile. Tap your uh, profile picture um, and, or your profile name to edit it. Um, and let's say you want to display your earned badges. You would tap your Game Circle profile in the top left of the Games Library or swipe from the left edge like you've been doing on the screen and then tap Profile. Tap a badge that you've earned and then tap Display this badge to display the badge on your profile. Here's a tip for you. You can earn badges to display on your profile by completing the challenges that are shown at the top of the Games Library. Tap Details on the challenge to learn what is required to complete that challenge. So let's say that you want to view time played leaderboard scores and achievements. You can press and hold the game in your library and then tap summary. Uh, let's say you want to add some friends to your game circle. So from the games library, which is your home, tap games, swipe from the left. You can tap friends, enter a nickname to find um, a game circle friend. From the game summary page, you can tap on user's avatar to visit their profile and then tap friend. Um, let's say you want, uh, what about the earn experience points? You'll earn experience points while playing any Game Circle enabled game and an additional um, experience points for completing challenges to earn badges. Game Circle enabled games have achievement or leaderboard icons next to the circle in the game library and will display a welcome back to the Game Circle message when you start the game. You can increase your profile level. Your level will increase once you've earned enough experience points by playing Game Circle tips or games. Um, here's a tip for you. The amount of experience points required to reach the next level is displayed in the experience points bar on the top of your profile. Um, to access the Game Circle settings, from the home, you tap Games, swipe from the left edge of the screen, and then tap Settings. From this screen, you can choose to show or hide your public Game Circle nickname, profile. Um, you can show or hide recommendations from the Games Library, or turn Whisper Sync for Games on or off from that same location. So this section was all about the Amazon App Store, on your Fire tablet, buying, downloading games, and managing your Game Circle profile. If you have any questions in regards to this, 
please get in contact with me. I would love to sit down with you for a free appointment and we can go over the Kindle inf information on buying and downloading games and being able to enable that game circle profile. Um, if you haven't already, go ahead and get into your Amazon App Store and just kind of play around with um, buying and downloading games. Um, and if you don't have a credit card set up, that's okay. Just install some of the free ones and don't worry about um, the purchasing. In this section, we're going to talk about Amazon free time, and that is setting up your Amazon free time, what it is, um, about the Amazon free time privacy, the free time unlimited, the profile, and using the profile. Um, you can use Amazon free time to provide your child with a customized experience on Fire Tablet. Before your child can use free time on your Fire Tablet, you need to create a parental control password, a lock screen password or PIN, and create a profile for your child. Um, no, Amazon free time automatically blocks access to the Silk browser and Kindle content stores, disables location-based services, in-app purchases, and social features, and requires your parental controls password to access free time settings exit free time or enable a disable wireless connectivity. Amazon free time profiles can be easily managed through the household profiles on your on your device. So you would just swipe down from the top of the screen and tap settings and then tap household profiles and then tap add child. Note if you don't have a lock screen pin set for your device you will need to set one in order for your child to use free time. Your lock screen pin is different than your parental cross um, controls password. So um, if you want to learn more that, about that, you could go to set a lock screen password or pin. And I think, do believe that we actually talk about some of that in the class as well. Uh, from the add child profile screen, select tap to set photo to add a profile picture. Enter your child's name, birthday, and gender. gender and then select um, use Amazon. So to use Amazon free time for children ages 3 to 8 years old, this profile type locks the tablet to portrait orientation, perfect for picture books and educational content. Um, if it's being used for a teen profile, which would be children 9 to 12 years old, this profile type gives older kids the look and feel of the Fire tablet with all of the same security and protection of a free time profile. Um, you can create up to four child profiles in the Amazon free time. So this is all about the um, to be able to set those limits for the kids. So many parents choose to limit their kids screen time um, but doing so without the proper tools is difficult. So with the Kindle free time parents can set daily limits for the Kindle Fire HD use or restrict certain categories like games and videos while leaving unlimited time for reading. So you've got some, some flexibility where you can just set it up a certain way for your child. Uh, the Amazon free time privacy, um, it respects your privacy and does not collect personal, personally identifiable information from your child in the Amazon free time. Uh, would they do not use your child's profile to provide a customized experience in the Amazon free time? In setting up your child's profile, we ask you to provide the child's screen name, which can be any word you choose, gender and birth date, which is subject to the privacy notice um, and is used to customize your child's available um, Amazon free time experience. Third-party apps you give your child access to in the Amazon free time may collect information for you and your child. For example, information regarding your interaction with the app. You can learn more about the information and particular third-party collects and how they use that information in the app's privacy notice. Any information that a third-party app collects from you or your device will be subject to the app's privacy notice or similar terms that app developer provides you and will not be subject to the Amazon.com privacy notice. Um, so now about the Fire Time Unlimited, or I'm sorry, the Free Time. I've been saying Fire so much. Um, about the Amazon Free Time Unlimited, Amazon Free Time Unlimited is an optional monthly subscription for Amazon Free Time that offers thousands of content titles for children ages three to eight years old. The content available for Amazon Free Time Unlimited is frequently refreshed with your subscription. You can access a Free Time Unlimited profile from any supported Fire tablet registered to the same account as the subscription. 
Content available in your child's profile through your free time unlimited subscription does not display ads, options for in-app purchases, links to websites, or links to social media. So note, you'll need a current valid credit card to sign up and pay for the Amazon free time unlimited subscription. Other forms of payment such as debit cards or Amazon store cards cannot be used at this for this. So to subscribe to the Amazon Free Time Unlimited, from the home screen you would tap Apps, then tap Amazon Free Time. If prompted, enter Parental Controls Password. Um, tap Manage Content and Subscription. Under the Manage Subscription Content, tap Subscribe to Free Time Unlimited. Select a monthly subscription plan. You can do it as a single child plan. So if you only have one child registered in the free time or you want to provide access to free time unlimited to some but not all of the child profiles in your household. Uh, you got the family plan if you want your subscription to cover all children in your household. Um, now remember, if you have an Amazon Prime membership, you'll be eligible for discounted monthly pan. So um, you can definitely check on that at the Amazon.com backslash free time. Amazon Free Time Unlimited content will appear in your child's profile after your Fire tablet is connected to a wireless network. Some content can be downloaded to your child's profile so that it can be used without a wireless connection. However, movies and TV shows in your Amazon Free Time Unlimited subscription cannot be downloaded and require a wireless connection. So to unsubscribe from an Amazon Free Time Unlimited, from the home screen you would tap Apps, then tap Amazon Free Time. If prompted, you would enter that parental control password. Then you would tap Manage Content and Subscription. Um, under the Manage Subscription Content, tap Unsubscribe from Free Time Unlimited. After you unsubscribe from Free Time Unlimited, a prorated refund will be processed from the most recent subscription charge. Any content for your subscription will no longer be available accessible. Uh, content you've purchased and added to your child's profile will still be accessible. So that was about the free time unlimited. So now if you want to add content to an Amazon free time profile, you can add or remove books, apps, movies, and TV shows in your child's profile in Amazon free time or Fire tablet. Um, only you can add or remove items in Amazon free time, but your child can open and use the content you add. So this is important. Personal documents, music, audiobooks, Amazon Instant Video Rentals, and titles from the Prime Instant Video Catalog can't be added to a profile. Public library books or books borrowed from the Kindle owner's lending library can be added to your child's profile but will be removed when the lending period expires. So from the home screen, you would tap Apps and then tap Amazon Free Time, tap Manage Content and Subscription, and then you can tap Add Titles to your child's library. And it would probably have your child's name. It wouldn't say your child. Um, and then you would tap the checkbox next to each title, title you want to add to your child's profile. To remove a title, uncheck the boxes next to the title. Now here's a tip for you. Tap for kids to view recommended family friendly titles in your library or tap a content library, for example books, to view and select individual titles on your own. Removing a title from your child's profile does not permanently remove it from your device. If you want to delete a title from free time, press and hold the item when you're inside a child's profile and then tap remove from device. Movies and TV shows can be deleted from the device outside of free time. So that's adding content. And now we're going to talk about using an Amazon free time profile. With, uh, within their Amazon free time profile, your child can read, watch, or play on your, pro on your Fire tablet and make progress toward their educational goals. Note, uh, the Amazon free time profiles, the screen orientation is locked to landscape view. For teen time profiles, the screen orientation is not locked. So to open a profile, you would tap your child's profile on the parent settings screen. And you can see that here on the left, how oh, they're all kind of lined up there. Um, and then, of course, there's a tip. Use the lock screen to easily switch between profiles. From the lock screen, tap the profile icon in the upper left corner and then tap the profile you want to open. Um, exiting free time while the child's profile, while in a child's profile, swipe down from the top of the screen, tap exit free time, and then enter your 
parental control password. Um, here's another tip for you. Use the lock screen to easily switch between profiles. From the lock screen, you can tap the profile icon in the upper left-hand corner and then tap the profile that you want. So same thing as we talked about with the opening of the profile. Um, if you want to open a content title from the navigation bar at the top of the screen, tap a content library, for example, books. Uh, tap a content item to open it. If the item is not already downloaded to your device, it will be downloaded and open when your device is connected to a wireless network. Uh, to navigate the carousel, you would swipe left to right um, to open the recent content. If you want to track your daily progress from the navigation at the top, uh, from the content library, for example, books, and then you would tap progress icon your child's overall time left until they meet their goal and time left until bedtime will appear. Uh, you can set daily time limits or educational goals. So from the Amazon free time app, tap daily goals and time limits, select the profile you want to update and then tap on to enable daily goals and time limits. Uh, so you've got weekdays and weekends. You can choose different educational goals and time limits for those. You've got your bedtime mode, which is to set a time, a set a limit for when your child can use the free time during the day. Tap turn off by to set the time when your free time is turned off. Tap stay off until, and this will set the time when the free time can be used again. Educational goals. You can set goals for viewing educational content. Use the drop down menus to select the amount of time you want your child to view the content. If you want to filter non-educational content from being used until your child's goals are met, tap the Learn First checkbox. And then you can limit screen or activity time from the Free Time app. Uh, tap Daily Goals, tap Limits. Use the slider to adjust total screen time for either of the following, total screen time or time by activity. Uh, your total screen time is the limit of total time your child can spend in Amazon free time. Uh, time by activity is, uh, it specifies individual time limits for specific activities like reading books. Uh, for unlimited time, slide the bar all the way to the right. To block access to a content type, slide the bar all the way to the left. This was a lot of information involving Amazon free time. Um, not a lot of people will use this um, unless you have a, a, you know, children or grandchildren that are going to be using your Kindle. It's probably a good idea to get yourself familiar with the Kindle free time. That way your child is not constantly on it um, doing non-educational related things if that's not what you want them doing. So this was all about Amazon free time. If you have any questions about this, please get in contact with me and I would love to assist you. In this section, we're going to be talking about your Amazon Music on your Fire Tablet, um, how you can buy digital music on the Fire Tablet, add Prime Music on your Fire Tablet, manage your music, and listen to your music. Um, you can purchase and listen to music from the digital music store on your Fire Tablet. You can explore and purchase new music from that same location. So if you're going to buy uh, some digital music. So note, digital music store purchases are stored in your music library for free. Don't count against any storage limits and are available for playback or download on any Fire tablet, Fire phone, PC, Mac, or compatible mobile device. If you want to add music from your computer to your cloud on your Fire tablet, you can import up to 250 songs to your music library for free. You can also upgrade your Amazon Music account to import up to 250,000 songs. Um, and of course, you would probably have to pay for that service. So from your home screen, you would tap Music and then tap Store. Uh, use the Search, which is going to have that magnifying glass up there for you. Um, and that tool to find a specific song, artist, album, or genre, or swipe from the left edge of the screen and choose a category listed under Shop to browse for music. When you search for music, tap All Genres to filter your search results to a specific genre or prime music only. To place your order, tap the button displaying the price, tap Buy for songs or Buy Now for albums to confirm your purchase. Now here's a tip for you. To listen to a sample, tap the play button next to the song title 
or the sample this album button on the product detail page. Song samples are limited to 30 seconds. Uh, to purchase Prime's music songs, tap the more options icon, which is going to be those three dots, dot, 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 up. Um, and then tap buy song. In the purchase notification, tap buy, tap the buy button and complete your purchase. After purchasing your music, tap see song in library or see album in library to listen to your music or tap continue shopping to find more music to purchase. So if you want to add Prime Music onto the Fire tablet, you have an Amazon Prime membership. You can add select songs, albums, and playlists from the Prime Music catalog to your music library on the Fire tablet for free. Prime Music can be streamed from your library, downloaded to your Fire tablet for offline playback, and added to your personal playlist as long as your Amazon Prime membership is active. If your Amazon Prime membership is canceled, Prime Music songs and features on your Fire tablet and any other eligible Prime Music devices will become inaccessible to you. So keep that in mind. To add Prime Music to your music library, you would just swipe from the left edge of the screen and then tap Prime Music or Prime Playlists. Tap Store, tap Prime Music or Prime Playlists. Uh, browse and select the Prime Music you want to add to your music library. Eligible Prime Music titles and playlists displays the Prime badge. And you'll see like a little check mark and it says Prime. And I've actually got it labeled there for you so you kind of have an idea of what it looks like. Um, and then you would tap the plus or the add for Prime songs, add albums um, to the library for Prime albums, or add playlists to the library for Prime playlist. After you add Prime Music, tap in library for songs, see album in the library or see playlist in the library, or go to your music library and play your music. Now, uh, note that um, if you select the play button in the digital music store on the Fire tablet, you will only hear the sample, not the complete song. To listen to the song in its entirely, you will need to add it to your library. Adding a Prime playlist to your library does not add the individual song within the playlist to your library. To add individual songs from a Prime playlist in your library, you would need to tap the Add or the plus icon on each song row. Uh, to find Prime playlists you've added to your library, swipe from the left edge of the screen and then tap Playlists. So managing your music, uh, music purchased from the digital music store added from the Prime Music Catalog, imported to your Amazon Music Library from your computer, or transferred to your Fire tablet with the USB cable can be found in your music library. To find music, swipe from the left edge of the screen and then select a category under the selection. To download a song, album, or playlist, press and hold the music you want to download and then tap download. To cancel the download, swipe down from the top of the screen and then tap the X. Um, also, there's a note. Prime Music can be downloaded to your device and played offline as long as you're an Amazon Prime membership is active. Uh, to delete music from your device, you would press and hold the music and then tap remove. Uh, to remove music from the cloud, press and hold the music and then tap delete from cloud. And this would be for your purchased music or remove from the library for Prime Music. Paid music removed from your library will need to be purchased again from the digital music store. So make sure you're not downloading something you're going to have to pay for again. Uh, to create a playlist, press and hold a song or an album in your music library and then select add to playlist. You can choose an existing playlist in your library to create a new playlist. Uh, note you can also create a playlist from the playlist screen. You tap the playlist or the plus icon, enter the name of your playlist and then tap save. After creating the playlist, tap the add icon next to each song you want to add and then tap done. Uh, you can't edit a Prime playlist added to your music library, but you can add Prime music to your personal playlist. So to listen to your music, music in your library can be played offline or streamed from your cloud on your Fire tablet. Note you may be required to authorize your device when you use the music library on your Fire tablet. Authorization is required based on a license agreement 
um, with the content providers. So you'll want to know about about that. Uh, you can browse by playlist, artists, albums, songs, or genres, or find recently played or added music in your music library. To listen to music, tap the cover art for the music you want to play, and then tap a song name or choose another playback option in the menu. When you listen to music, playback controls will appear on the screen so you can customize your listening experience. Here's a tip for you. If you're streaming music from the cloud, make sure you have a strong wireless connection. Buffering or a pause while loading or playing your music is generally caused by a slow internet connection. Songs in your music library will also show plus lyrics if they support X-Ray for Music. With X-Ray for Music, lyrics are added to your song so you can follow along line by line. So this was all about um, the Amazon Music on your Fire tablet. And I hope that you kind of get the idea of how to buy it, what that Prime membership is, uh, managing your music, and how you can listen to it. So if you didn't quite grasp all this and you need some further assistance, please get in contact with me. I would love to sit down with you and kind of go over your Kindle with you. But at this time, why don't you go ahead and minimize and just kind of work on some of these things we've already talked about. Look at the free time. Um, look at your app store for your games. Check out your music. Don't be afraid. The, the Kindle, um, the only way you're going to learn how to use this is if you're pushing buttons and you're getting in there and you're actually doing things with it. Besides reading books and putting music on here, um, managing your photos and personal videos on your Fire tablet is a must. Everybody likes to take pictures of their families and their loved ones, and we wouldn't want to lose any of those valuable things. So in this section, we're going to be talking about taking photos and personal videos, how you can download photos and personal videos from the cloud, how you can view, add, and share your photos. You can use the camera on your Fire tablet to take photos and record video. Photos and videos taken with the camera can be automatically stored in the cloud drive. Um, automatic photo and video upload uploads count towards your total cloud drive storage and are disabled by default. If you want your photos or videos to upload to your cloud drive automatically, you would want to swipe from swipe from the left edge of the screen, tap settings, and then tap on next to autosave. Now here's the tip. Uh, when you take a picture or record a video, make sure the camera is clean and free of any obstructions and keep the device steady to avoid motion blur. To open the camera, you would tap photos from the home screen and then tap the camera icon. Note, not all Fire tablet devices have a camera. So um, that's what we're talking about right now is the Kindle Fire, which does, and the Kindle Fire HD. So, um, But if you have an older version of the Kindle, it may not. So keep that in mind when you're doing it. Now, um, the description for the camera, you have a bunch of different icons. How to turn on, turn on and off your flash. How you can reverse from a rear facing to a front facing. You've got your settings in there. Uh, you've got some panorama. There's different images that you can take. Um, to take a picture, you would just tap the screen to focus on a specific location. Uh, you can zoom in and out and then press the volume buttons on your device or pinch the screen with two fingers. That's to zoom. Uh, and then you would press and hold that shutter to capture the stack of photos. Um, a counter of the number of images captured will show up next to it. To record a video, you would have a red button there. Um, showing the time of the recorded video. And then, of course, to zoom in and out, you could use your volume buttons or do that pinch zoom again. Um, to download your photos and personal videos from cloud, after you connect to a wireless network, you can download your photos and personal videos uh, from your cloud account to your Fire tablet. Note, the photo library supports the following types. You can either do a JPEG, a PNG, uh, a GIF, a BMP, or an MP4. From the home, you would tap Photos, swipe from the left edge of the screen, and then tap the Cloud Drive. Photos or videos um, stored in your Cloud Drive will appear there. Press and hold an album or a photo or video inside an album, and then tap Download. Uh, swipe from the left edge of the screen, and then tap Device to see your downloaded photo or video. Note, you can also transfer photos and personal videos from your computer 
to your Fire tablet with a micro USB cable or upload. Um, and there's actually a video that shows you how to do that um, within this class. So, and I believe that's a little bit later on. Uh, to view, add, or share your photos, um, using your Fire tablet from the home, you would tap photos and then swipe from the left edge of the screen. We've been doing that this whole class period, so you should be pretty well at that. Um, to view your photos, or um, videos you would tap one of the following. You could tap all, which is um, viewing the photos and personal videos stored on your device or in the cloud drive. You can push on videos, which is viewing personal videos stored on your device or cloud drive. You can push on the camera roll, which is recent photos and videos taken with the camera. Uh, you've got the cloud drive, which is uh, viewing photos and videos stored in the cloud drive. And you've got your device, which um, view photos and videos downloaded to your Fire tablet or photos and videos downloaded from the internet or email attachments. Now note some of the above options for viewing your photos may be available on your device if you're may not be available on your device if you don't have a camera. So if you don't have a camera you can just skip this entire section. You don't, you don't need to worry about any of this. Um, to add photos or videos to your library to view them on your device you would tap add photos and then you would tap one of the following, either mobile device, PC or Mac, Facebook, or transfer through USB. Follow the on-screen instructions to import your photos to your device. So when viewing your photos, so if you want to zoom in and out, you can do that by pinching your fingers um, outward and inward, um, or you can use the volume buttons. Um, if you want to view your photos and videos in a timeline grid, you would rotate your Fire tab tablet vertically to enter portrait mode, swipe in from the right edge of the screen, or tap a year or month marker to view a timeline of your photos on the right edge of your screen. Tap a month or year in the timeline to jump to that set of photos. So if you want to view photos and videos in a mosaic, you would rotate your Fire tablet horizontally to enter landscape mode. Um, if you want to play a personal video, you would just tap the play button on the video. If you want to share a photo or video, you would tap share to share your photo or video through an email or a connected social network. Note, only photos can be shared via Twitter. So keep that in mind. Um, if you do want to delete a photo or video, tap delete to remove an individual photo or video from your device. Tip, uh, you could tap select to delete multiple photos at the same time, so you're not having to do them individually. Um, if you want to edit a photo, you would tap edo, edit to use the photo editor to enhance or draw on your photos. You can print a photo. You can tap more and then tap print. Select a printer from the list of available printers connected to your network and then tap print. Um, and here's another tip for you. Tap select to print multiple photos at the same time. Here's an important fact. Personal videos from your cloud drive must be less than 20 minutes long to stream them on your Fire tablet. If you want to view a personal video longer than 20 minutes, you may transfer the video from your computer to your device using the micro USB cable. Personal vi um, videos will be digital rights management, DRM, can be viewed on your device. So this section was all about managing your photos, personal videos, on your Fire tablet, how you can add those photos and videos, how you download them from the cloud, and how you can view, add, and share photos. If you haven't had a chance to take a picture with your Kindle, that and, it, and assuming you have a camera, go ahead right now and just take a random picture and go in there and play with some of those settings. Now I want to talk to you about doing updates on your Kindle, and sometimes during the time that you own the Kindle, they may do some bug fixes or find out that they need to do some changes to the software. Um, and when this happens, they will typically send you some kind of an alert to let you know that um, you need to do them. But it's also a good idea to probably check every now and then to see if you have any updates. So for instance, if you're in some of your apps, um, let's say you're in Facebook or something along those lines and it just isn't working properly, it could just be the fact that maybe it just needs an update, the entire tablet itself. So um, your device needs to be fully charged and connected to a Wi-Fi network before you can download any software updates. 
So you would swipe down from the top of the screen and then tap Settings, tap Device Options, and then tap System Updates. Tap Check Now. If an update is available, your Fire Tablet will automatically download this update. After you download the app, um, the update, then you just uh, tap Update. Your device will restart during the software update. After the restart, the message Installing System Update will appear on the screen. And you can see that here. First, you're going to want to need to determine whether uh, which type of Kindle you have, but they're all done through the settings. So it's really important to keep your Kindle up to date on all of its software. That way it's performing 100% for you. I would hate for certain things not to be working and you not understanding why. So if that is happening to you, you may want to try to see if you have an update available for whatever you know bug fixes or adding more to the software itself. So why don't you go ahead right now and just check to see if your Kindle needs an update. And remember you're going to do that from your settings. And then you're going to tap device options, system updates, and check now. Um, and then once it's done downloading, then you can type in update and it'll show you at the bottom there. It'll say installing your update and once it's done, it'll come back on like it normally would. And then you can try those apps that maybe you were having a problem with before and see if that fixes your problem. If it does not, then you may want to go in and just delete the app entirely and reinstall it. That way um, you have a better understanding of, of what the update kind of does. So sometimes those apps can be updated through the update through your tablet. Other times you have to remove them and reinstall them. So any questions about this, please get in contact with me. I would love to meet you and we could sit down and work on your Kindle. Transfer content from a computer to your Kindle Fire. You can transfer a variety of content such as books, videos, photos, documents, and other compatible digital files from your Windows or Mac computer to your Kindle Fire using a USB cable. From your computer, locate the Kindle content you want to transfer to your Kindle Fire. If you've not yet purchased the item, choose Transfer via Computer when making your purchase in the Kindle Store from the Deliver To drop-down menu and then click Buy Now with one click. You can also use Manage Your Content and Devices to deliver Kindle content to your computer. Visit Amazon.com forward slash MYCD and locate the item you want to download from your library. Click the Actions button and then click Download and Transfer via USB. Choose the Kindle device you want to use to access the content and click the Download button. You may be prompted to open or save the file. Choose Save and select a location that is easy to find again, such as the desktop. Please note not all Kindle content is available for transfer from Manage Your Content and Devices. Once the file has been saved to your computer, connect your Kindle device to your computer using a USB cable. Plug the large end of the USB cable into an available USB port or a powered USB hub connected to your computer. Plug the small end of the USB cable into the micro USB port on the bottom of your Kindle. Some computers require a free file transfer utility to copy files between the computer and your Kindle Fire. You may be prompted to download this additional software. Follow the instructions listed in the dialog box or visit www.kindle.com slash support slash downloads for more information and access to these files. After it is properly connected, your Kindle will appear in the same location as external USB drives usually appear. For Windows users, this is typically in the Computer or My Computer menu. For Mac users, the drive will appear on the desktop. Open the Kindle folder, usually titled Kindle, on your computer. And then open the folder titled Internal Storage. If your Kindle doesn't appear, you may need to unlock the screen of your device. You will see several folders. Drag and drop your downloaded Kindle content into the appropriate folder. Move Kindle content such as books to the Books folder, Photos to the Photos folder, and personal videos to the Movies folder.
For a complete list of supported file formats, visit www.kindle.com support. Remember to safely eject your Kindle device from your computer after your transfer is complete. Your content now appears in the corresponding content library as well as the home page of your Kindle Fire. One of the main reasons people buy a Kindle is because of the availability of the e-reader, uh, being able to read books and audio books. So that's what we're going to talk about now is the um, in the audio books library on your Fire tablet, you can shop for, purchase, and listen to audiobooks from audible.com. So from the home screen, you would tap audiobooks and then tap store. Use the search field, which is going to have that magnifying glass to find a title. To narrow your search, swipe from the left edge of the screen and then select a category such as immersion reading or audible bestsellers. Tap a title to play a sample. And you can learn more about the audio book and see purchase options. Uh, note, to learn more about the audio listener membership plans, you're going to want to visit um, audible.com backslash plans. Uh, to go to your library, swipe from the left edge of the screen and then tap audiobooks. Tap a title to download to your device. After the download is complete, you can listen to the audiobook even when your device is not connected to a wireless network. To listen to an audiobook, tap audiobooks from the home screen and then tap stats and badges to view your audiobook listening stats such as daily, monthly, and total listening time and audio badges have you have earned. Um, here's a tip. You can earn badges from your Audible account based on your listening activities and other actions such as when or how long you listen to a book. So linking your Amazon and Audible accounts together, if you, have, if you have an existing Audible account but don't see your titles in the audio books library on your Fire tablet, you will need to link your Audible account to your Amazon account. So you would go to the www.audible.com, sign in using your Audible username and password. You'll be asked to connect, to connect your Audible account with your Amazon account. Click the link now button. Enter your Audible password when requested. Enter your enter enter your Amazon email address and password when requested. Uh, select the credit or debit card you wish to use as the default card for Audible purchases and membership charges, or enter a new card or debit card. Um, after you link your Amazon and Audible account, your Audible Audiobooks now appear on your Fire tablet, and you can access Audible member discounts. You can manage your Audible audiobooks in three places. Uh, your audiobooks library on your Fire tablet, manage your content and devices, or at www.audible.com. When you use Audible, you will need to access your Audible account with your Amazon email and password. Uh, your previous Audible username will no longer work. So that's actually linking you. So you would want to go to the audible.com um, audible in order to create yourself an account. And then you can link them together to get those audio books. Um, or, of course, you can always download Overdrive through your Kindle, and that's done through your library. And that's just going into your Amazon App Store and typing in Overdrive, and you'll be able to download it and get audio and readable books that way as well. Um, if you are wanting to read just your basic book, you can buy and download Kindle content. After you connect to a wireless network, you can buy content from the Kindle Store and download directly to your Fire tablet. Uh, to visit the Kindle Store, you would tap Books or Newsstand and then tap Store. And there's a picture there at the bottom that kind of shows you that. When you're ready to purchase a title, you would tap the Buy button to purchase a book or single newspaper or magazine issue. Tap the Subscribe Now button to subscribe to a newspaper or magazine. Now here's a tip. Tap Downward Sample to download the beginning of the book for free. At the end of the sample, you can tap Buy For uh, to purchase the book. When you purchase a book from a sample, the book begins at the last page you were on. Unlike complete Kindle books purchased from the Kindle store, samples are not stored in the Amazon cloud and will not sync across devices or Kindle reading applications. After your purchase, Kindle content is automatically downloads to your device. The content is also stored 
in your content library so you can download it to other devices or Kindle reading apps registered to the same account. So here's some reading basics. You can sync your book between devices or Kindle reading apps, add bookmarks or notes, and highlight text while you're reading Kindle books. Um, so if you are syncing or viewing view or reading a progress. Uh, while you're reading, you can view the number of pages you've read, the percentage of the book that's read, or the amount of time left in the chapter or book. When reading books on other devices or Kindle reading apps, sync your Fire tablet to the furthest page read to continue reading where you left off. So syncing your reading progress. While you're reading, you can tap the center of the screen, swipe from the left edge of the screen to to open the Go To menu and then tap Sync to the furthest page read. If enabled, Whisper Sync will automatically update and sync your book across all registered devices or Kindle reading apps. Now here's a tip. To turn off reading progress, tap the bottom left corner to cycle through your tracking options. Continue until the area is blank, which indicates that reading progress is now turned off. Uh, for to view location numbers. So while reading, tap the lower left corner of the screen to toggle between settings. Uh, location numbers are the digital equivalent of physical page numbers and provide a way to easily reference a place in your reading material regardless of font size. The location displayed in the Kindle book is specific to the Kindle format and does not directly translate to the page number of printed or other electronic versions of the same book. So if you want to view the page numbers, while reading you would tap the left corner, the left lower corner of the screen and toggle between your settings. Page numbers correspond directly to a book's print edition. Not all Kindle books include page numbers. Because you can change the font size and other features, you may be able to view more than one page on your screen at one time. Um, if you want to view the time you have read, uh, again from that left corner button or the left, you're going to um, tap the lower left corner on the screen. Um, and the time to read feature uses your reading speed to let you know how much time is left before you finish your chapter or before you finish your book. Your specific reading speed is stored only on your device. It is not stored on Amazon servers. Um, to view your progress, you can tap the center of the screen to show the progress bar. Uh, your reading progress is displayed as a percentage in the progress bar. Tap anywhere on the progress bar to jump to another location. You can continue reading from there or jump back to your previous location by tapping a placeholder dot on the progress bar. When you close the book, your most recent page is saved. Now here's a tip. To scroll quickly through your book, tap the center of the screen to bring up the progress bar and then press and drag the circle left or right. Um, going to go to the next or previous page, um, you would just go to the next page, tap the right side of the screen, and the previous page you would tap the left side of the screen. Or to go to a page location, while reading, tap the center of the screen, and then swipe from the left edge of the screen. Enter a page number or location to jump to it. Scroll up or down until you see a desired chapter or section heading, and then tap the heading to go to the first page of that chapter or section. Uh, note you can go to a different chapters or section if the publisher added chapter markers to the Kindle book. If you're reading a print replica textbook, preview windows will appear above the progress bar. Flick through the preview windows and then tap a window to jump to that page. So this was a lot of information about your book and your audiobooks, but I hope you kind of get an understanding. Um, by now, you're probably already downloading them, so um, this is probably some information that, that you don't really need. But um, I also want to let you know how you can change your font size. So while you're reading, you can tap the center of the screen to show the reading toolbar, and then you can tap the AA, which is a big letter A and a small letter A, um, to view. You can change the text display for your Kindle book. Um, by the font size, you can tap on that big a little a it's a combination and that's going to increase your font size um, or you can tap on the same icon that's got a down button arrow um, to decrease the font size uh, for the font you can tap the font name for example Georgia and then tap your preferred font um, some books offer a font specified by the publisher if this is available for your title you will see the publisher font option you can also select background colors 
uh, margins, line spacing. You can add bookmarks, highlights, and notes. Uh, to add a bookmark, you would click on Add a Bookmark. Tap the right corner of the screen. A bookmark will appear. Um, and then you can do the same thing to remove it. To highlight a word, you would press the hold of word and then tap your preferred color. To highlight a phrase, you would press and drag to highlight the text and then tap your preferred color. Um, if you want to edit or remove, you would just remove a highlight by pressing and holding the word in the highlighted area and then tap the X. Um, popular highlights. Um, you can also add notes. You can press and drag the highlight to um, on, to highlight the text, tap the note or the plus icon, um, and then type your note. And of course you want to tap save to create your note. Um, or you can remove your note or edit it. Tap the notepad where the note appears. After you edit your note, you can tap save. To remove it, um, you would just tap it and click on remove on that note field. So again, if you're having any problems reading your Kindles, um, or anything like that, please get in contact with me for a free appointment. If you haven't had a chance to download um, any books, I suggest that you go to the Kindle Content Store and do that, or you can even go on to Overdrive, which is located in your Amazon Store, and download that, and that's linked to your library, so nothing would cost you anything there. Um, or maybe you're just wanting to look for some subscriptions. Um, so why don't you right now go ahead and get in there and just kind of play around with your readable and your audio books. Rent Kindle textbooks on Kindle. Some textbooks are available as rentals. When you rent Kindle textbooks, you only pay for the amount of time you use your book. By renting Kindle textbooks, you can save up to 80% off the list price of the book. The book is available on devices and free reading apps, which can be accessed from your computer. Kindle textbooks save your notes and annotations even after the rental period is over. Some textbooks are only available for a fixed rental length. To rent, search for your textbook in the textbook store or from the Kindle store search bar. Browse the Kindle store for titles with a Rent This Book message. When you've made your selection, Click Rent This Book. Use the calendar to choose your rental period. Click Rent Now with one click to rent your book. From Manage Your Content and Devices, you can deliver and send your textbook to your device and reading apps. To receive a full refund for your textbook, you must return your book within seven days of your order. We do not provide partial refunds for unused rental time. When your rental period ends, your rental book won't be accessible, though you can access any notes and highlights you've made even after your rental period has ended. At any point during your rental, you're able to extend your rental period or purchase the textbook. You can re-rent a book after your rental has expired, but it will be treated as a new rental period. To extend your rental period, visit Manage Your Content and Devices at www.amazon.com forward slash mycd. Select your rental book and click Extend Rental. To purchase your rental, select your rental book and select Purchase. When you purchase your book, you pay only the difference between retail price and what you've already paid in rental fees. Lend or borrow Kindle books on Kindle. You can lend eligible Kindle books to another reader for up to 14 days. The borrower does not need to own a Kindle device and can read the book after downloading a free Kindle reading app. A book can only be loaned one time. Magazines and newspapers are currently not available for lending. During the loan period, you will not be able to read the book that you loaned. To loan a book, Visit Manage Your Content and Devices at www.amazon.com forward slash mycd. Select your book. In the Actions menu, select Loan This Title. If Loan This Title is not an option, lending is not available for that title. Enter the recipient's email address. If desired, enter a personal message.
Be sure to send the Kindle Book Loan notification to your friend's personal email address and not their Kindle email address. Click Send Now. To receive and borrow a loaned book from a friend, open the email message, A Loaned Book for You. Click the Get Your Loaned Book Now button. Your web browser will automatically launch to Amazon so you can accept the loan. Sign in to your Amazon account. If you have a Kindle device or reading app, select which device you would like the book delivered to and then click the Accept Loaned Book button. If you do not have a Kindle device or reading app, click the Accept Loaned Book button and follow the on-screen instructions to download a free Kindle reading app. To return your borrowed book, visit Manage Your Content and Devices again. Select your book, click Delete from Library, and click Yes to confirm the return. I know this class has been really big and I'm, I'm there for you, cheering you on, getting you all the way to this point. This is going to be the last section that we're going to talk about today. I just want you to know the difference between the Kindle Fire and the Kindle Fire HD. And one of the first differences is going to be your price. Um, and the cost of it. Uh, the Kindle Fire is going to be a little bit cheaper than your Kindle Fire HD. Um, some people might find these deals a handy way of grabbing a bargain while others might be annoyed by them. Um, however, that is one of the main comparisons is the price of the item. Uh, the design. The Fire has a thinner has thinner borders around the screen than the Fire HD um, and looks less clunky and old-fashioned. It still won't win any style awards, um, but it's not especially light. So um, the same weight as the Fire HD, give or take. Uh, the Fire measures um, 17 millimeters shorter than the um, HD. Um, the design difference is similar in tradition, um, but you can also use different portrait modes in that or different modes. Both speakers are at the top with the power button on the bottom. On the Fire HD, the speakers are on either side in landscape mode, which is great for watching videos. Oddly, the Fire has no physical volume buttons, which is kind of an annoyance. Um, next to the power button is a micro USB connector for sync and charging and standard head jack, um, headphone jack. Note that neither tablet comes with um, mains charger. You can buy this uh, separately. So you can, of course, buy any USB charger, uh, which provides a, vi a 5 volt at 1.8. So. Um, another difference is the screen. The Kindle Fire is a 7-inch tablet with an IPS, which is your in-plane switching screen. This is the same type as used in iPads and means vibrant colors and wide viewing angles. The Kindle Fire screen also happens to have great contrast. So it's definitely bigger than uh, your paper white. Um, the resolution is better on most of the tablets, uh, but everything looks noticeably fuzzier on the Kindle Fire HD. Um, you're particularly notice the lower resolution when browsing the web, but for reading books and watching film videos, it seems to be okay. Uh, the other difference is that the Fire has only two-point touch screen, whereas the Fire HD can detect up to ten fingers at once. This is a little of a coincidence, though, since two fingers are all that's required for most of your pinching and zooming. Um, another difference would be your storage. This is the one of the Kindle Fire's weak areas. There's only one model and it has an 8 gig of storage. After the operating system and other system files are accounted for, there's around 5.5 gigs for your own stuff, apps, books, music, movies, photos. Uh, that's not very much and there's no memory card slot for adding more, so you're stuck with that. Uh, you do get a free cloud storage for all the content you buy from Amazon, but it's hardly convenient to have to delete apps and other media from your tablet because you've run out of space totally. Um, with the Fire HD, you have a choice of a 16 gig or a 32 gig. Again, the user storage is a few gigabytes less in each case. Um, another difference would be the camera. 
Um, if Skype is a priority, don't buy the Kindle Fire. It has no camera at all. The Fire HD has a 1.3 megabyte front facing camera, which can also record video. So uh, make sure that you buy the right kind of Kindle if you're wanting to be able to do that. So the main differences are going to be um, the camera and the size of the device. Um, other than that, pretty much everything else is the same. So uh, make sure you do a little bit of research before you decide on which exactly you would like to use. So those are just some of the differences um, that are noticeable between the Kindle Fire and the Kindle Fire HD. Okay, I am applauding you all the way around. Congratulations, you did it. Take a deep breath. It's all over. I am so glad you took the, st the time and the steps to educate yourself on your device. And of course, without you, there'd be no reason for me to even have these classes. So thank you, thank you, thank you for taking the time. Uh, make sure to be listening for your secret code for the Computer Class Pass Incentive Program. It is in here somewhere. So you're going to want to get that to me, whether you call me, email me, or come in and see me. Uh, but again, I can't express enough. Um, I'm very, very proud of you for making it to the end. You should be very proud of yourself. You've made it through the Kindle Fire and the Kindle Fire HD class, so you are right on top of it. And remember, one-on-one -on -one appointments are available to you for free, and I've stressed that throughout the entire class, so please call me today to schedule one. Um, it's not costing you anything, so take advantage of what the library has to offer you. And there's my phone number there listed, and again, I just want to tell you thank you for being a part of the Understanding Your Kindle Fire class. I want to thank the following websites for all their information, pictures, and um, any content that was used within this class came from the following websites. Narration was done by Beth Gaff. And without any of these websites, we would not have been able to have this class today. Please make sure you refer to Amazon.com when doing your Kindle because all the tutorial videos are located there for you. And uh, I don't, wouldn't want you to miss out on any of those videos. So thanks again to the following.